Hello everyone. We are going to experiment a new model for AI Video One 2.2. This is the PUSA version 1.0. Developed by Raphael Liu and a team, PUSA V 1.0 builds on the cutting edge WAN 2.2 architecture. And here is what they mentioned. PUSA delivers cinematic quality videos with incredible efficiency. So what's the special of this model? They use something called vectorized time step adaptation or VTA approach that gives frame by frame control over video generation. This means PUSA can handle a wide range of tasks in one unified framework, from crafting videos straight from text prompts to animating a single image, connecting start and end frames, or even extending and completing existing clips with seamless transitions. Well, let's see. So what is the uniqueness of this model? PUSA V1.0 was trained on just 4,000 high-quality video samples, thousands of times smaller than competitors, yet it outperforms them, scoring an impressive 87.32% on VBench I2V. Plus, it's cost-effective with training costs to just $500 compared to over $100,000 for similar models. Also in version 1.0, it combined LightX2V for generation speed acceleration you get good results in as four inference steps, making it perfect for creators on consumer-grade hardware like an NVIDIA RTX 4090. So let's try out how to run the PUSE version 1.0 in Comfy UI. First, we need to download the LoRa model, and you've got two ways to do that. The first one is, of course, the official PUSE Hugging Face repo, where you can download the high-noise and low-noise PUSE safe tensor files. Now that's going to be a 4.9 gigabyte file. If you want something more trimmed down and convenient to load in Comfy UI, you can go to the WAN Video Comfy repo, that's the Hugging Face repository for the WAN Video wrapper. There's a folder there now for PUSA. When you click into the PUSA folder, you'll see WAN 2.1, that's the previous one, which launched just a few days before the WAN 2.2 base model release. I haven't really talked about this LoRa model before because I didn't think it was worth mentioning since the new WAN 2.2 came out. So, the WAN 2.2 PUSA version 1 is right here. You've got the high noise one, resized, dynamic 80, 98 rank, and BF16, as well as the low noise model. Both are almost 1 gigabyte in file size, which makes them way more convenient for running smaller models in Comfy UI using the model loader. And right here, I've just run these examples. So the left side that I highlighted is running with the PUSA version 1.0. The one on the left is just WAN 2.2 linked up with the LightX2 VLoRa model. So I want to show some examples of running this in the native node and later we'll try it in the WAN video wrapper too. The thing is, if you're running this LoRa model by itself, you're gonna get a pretty blurry result. And as you can see, I've got two groups set up here using PUSA only and the others using LightX 2V LoRa model along. When you do a side-by-side -side comparison, you can see it's kind of not quite there when it comes to high quality. This model isn't really the way to go if you're chasing better quality result, especially you load this LoRa model alone. One thing worth to mention, the LoRa strength are based on the recommended setting from PUSA Hugging Face repo. High noise 1.5, low noise 1.4 for setting. Now, take a look at another example. Here's image to video. Same thing happens when you're just running this LoRa model by itself. The Light X2V on the other side gives you way better results than WAN 2.2 with the PUSA LoRa. The fire flames and smoke with Light X2V look way clearer. So let's see what we can actually do with this model, what features it has, and what you can play around with. So for better way to use this LoRa mode, here's a fix. Try stacking the LoRa's. You can stack PUSA with the Light X2V, both high noise and low noise versions, across both sampling groups. Once you do that, your video generation goes back to normal. And when you compare it to the earlier clip that only used Light X2V, the quality is basically the same. So for both image to video and text to video, there's no real difference if you're just running PUSA the standard way. Now, the unique thing about the PUSA model. It's got these features, start frame, end frame, and video extension. Plus, it can work alongside Light X2V to run video generation in just four steps. So let's test out the video extension feature and see how it works with PUSA.
For the PUSA WAN 2.2 LoRa models, you can also run them in the WAN video wrapper. There's an updated example workflow in there you can check out. It uses the exact features mentioned in the PUSA Hugging Face repo, like video extension. So here's how the video extension works. It captures your input video and pulls the last frames from it, plus the start frames. Then, at the end, it stitches everything back together into the final output. The end frame gets sent to the WAN video encoder, which turns it into extra image latent data. And as you can see, there's a new node called WAN Video Add PUSA Noise. That node lets you run the video using image embeds and adds multiple noise inputs from the scheduler, then sends it all as one single image embed into the sampler. Now, on the sampler side, there's a video scheduler that looks a lot like the K-Sampler Advanced. You can set start steps and end steps, measured by total steps. You can also adjust the shift number, which affects multiple samplers too. Then it goes into the WAN video sampler, where you've got both high noise and low noise sampling. At the end, everything gets stitched back together with the extended video from this part. VAE decode kicks in, and it's merged back with the input frames. This is just a demo showcase, by the way. But here's the real deal. The actual video extension setup. You've got your input start frames from the beginning of your video, then the extension part from the VAE decode gets stitched into the image batch, and you end up with one full video, including the extension. This example is just a few seconds long, and at the end, those 81 frames, that's all generated by the AI using the PUSA LoRa model. Here's a clearer look at where the extension happens. As you can see, after the guy turns his head to the left, the rest, the jumping, the bumping motions, that's all generated by the PUSA LoRa model. Now, here's the model loader. We're using the WAN 2.2 text-to-video model. This isn't an image-to-video model, by the way. And over here in the LoRa stack, we've got both the PUSA model and the LightX 2V LoRa models. I'm actually using the LightX 2V model from WAN 2.1 here. It tends to perform a bit better for text-to-video and other tasks. The VAE loader comes with the WAN video text encoder. The WAN video text encoder has some options you can play with like using disk caching or choosing whether to run the encoder on GPU or CPU all in one single node for easy setup. Plus, you can input your text prompts right there. More convenient. So I'm going to run this video now. This one was generated using PUSA in the native node workflow. As you can see, it's only loading 81 frames, which means the video is really short. So I'm going to extend it, make it a bit longer. To do that, you just input the total number of frames here, kind of like the looping and video extensions I've talked about in past videos, you've got to set how many frames you want. For example, I'll put in 201 frames, that means I'm tripling the video length. Instead of just 81 frames, now it'll generate way more. After setting the total frames and input frame count, this is basically the overlap, like how many frames are used in the stitching part of the extension, I'll just leave it at default for this demo. I'll also change the text prompt to match what I want for this extended version. So now it'll be a video of a warrior riding a horse, and he'll keep riding with a longer extension. Let's run it and see how it turns out. Here's what you get after generating. First, in the video scheduler, you'll see the sigma graph. When you set video sigma to steps, which is set to 0.875 by default, it maps to this curve. At the end steps, 0.875 marks the point where it cuts off the high noise phase and switches to low noise for the rest of the video generation. This gives you a clearer picture of how the model sampling progresses and how efficient your step count is for processing and generating the video. You want to keep this curve smooth, like this, instead of starting at one and dropping straight down. That kind of drop means your video won't process well, so keep it like this. From what I've seen, the sweet spot for Sigma in one video 2.2 is somewhere between 0.8 and 0.9. So sticking around 0.8 is a good general rule. Now, looking at the video extension result, we've got the last 24 frames, then it continues into the 201 frames I just generated, adding that extra duration. And here, you can see we're bringing in both the reference video and the generated one to check out the end of the clip.
Right here after the extension, you can see the warrior keeps riding the horse and raises his sword, extending that horse riding scene smoothly. So yeah, this is how you can use video extensions with the WAN video wrapper. And honestly, this method is way more convenient, less set up, easier to use. If you go the native node route, you'll need more customization. But if you're experienced, that gives you more flexibility. Anyway, this is how you run Puza with video extensions using the last 24 frames as a reference and continuing the generation. There's a custom node here that adds extra latent data into the WAN video wrapper, plus extra noise for PUSA to process. Compared to what I did in previous videos, just using a single frame with image to video and extending length, having overlap frame is way better. It's actually similar to how we used to do it with WAN 2.1 VASE, where we added extra frames as used overlap frames to generate long videos. Same concept for video frames handling. So here, after about 5 seconds, it add the extra 201 frames to make it 16 seconds. Pretty cool. As for PUSA, yeah, there's a little improvement in what it offers feature-wise. Compare with their WAN 2.1 PUSA. But in terms of video quality, it's still not the go-to video LoRa model. You can get the same or even better quality without using PUSA at all. So personally, I'd say, maybe the video extension features are useful. Start frame and end frame. You don't need the PUSA LoRa for that. You can do it natively in Comfy UI with WAN 2.2 already. That's it for this video. Another way to handle video extensions by using PUSA WAN 2.2 LoRa models. I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.